Hey everyone, my name is Carlos and I am the founder and CEO of Product School. I'm very excited to be with you today because we're going to be doing a hands-on session on product management templates. And for that, we have two experts on the topic. We have Lane Shackleton, Head of Product and Coda, and Paul Estes, Chief Community Officer at Mural. Hey guys. How are you doing today? Hey. Thank you for joining the show, but most importantly, for building awesome templates that now are being used by thousands of product managers around the world. So let's dive into that. Um, maybe you, Paul, can tell us a bit more about yourself, your background, and how you kind of landed into this project. Yeah, I spent 20 years in big tech at uh, Microsoft, Amazon, and uh, Dell. And, you know, about six months ago, ran into a workshop that used Mural. Uh, and I was kind of blown away by it, you know, just the experience, because it was so different than the world I had lived in previously, where you'd sit at the head of a room and somebody do a PowerPoint presentation, and then, you know, they'd rush through it. And, and the experience that I had, and this is before I joined the company, was everybody was collaborating and every thought and every idea was put on the table. And that was just an extremely powerful um, thing. And then I had the opportunity uh, to, to join the company. And then we've partnered uh, with you, you know, both product school and Coda, and, and I'm excited to show you the, the template that's been created. Love your room, by the way, and I can see a mural uh, <laughs> in the background. Well, this, this mural, just so you know, all for all the product managers out there, the mural right here on the, the surface board uh, is something that our team is doing as we deeply understand what uh, product managers need. And the, these templates from product school are just the beginning of, of the things that we're going to focus on to make it very easy for product managers to do their job and get feedback and thoughts, not only from customers, but from internal stakeholders. Really cool. Um, Lane, what about you? Yeah, my name's Lane. I lead the product and design teams at Coda. Uh, let's see, quick background. I spent a bunch of years uh, at Google and YouTube before this. Uh, came over to YouTube right after the acquisition. It's kind of the Wild West. Um, uh, getting sued by Viacom for a billion dollars, couldn't count to revenue. Um, was there for that whole journey up until 2015. Um, uh, my boss at YouTube is uh, was a guy named Shashir Marotra, who's the founder of Coda. Um, and I was going to go start a company, and Shashir kept showing me demos of what they were up to basically described how the world had been divided into people who can make software and the people who can't make software. And being someone who comes from a non-technical background like geosciences and anthropology, that really spoke to me. Had to go, you know, learn how to write code inside of inside of Google. And so this idea that like we could bridge this gap was really uh, you know had a had a deep felt sense for that problem space. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm a huge fan of products that are built on simple insights and, and his insight at the time was the Trojan horse to sort of bridge this gap in the mass market is actually a document and something that's, you know, familiar that people are already reaching for day in and day out. Um, so yeah, decided to join Coda. It's been five years it's been in a super fun ride um, and excited to, to partner with product school and mural and uh, show you what we've been up to. It's been a, a fun ride. And I completely agree with you. Like this, the strength we've noticed in the product world of now not needing to be super technical or knowing a lot of different things in order to build um, something. It's been really powerful and allowing many more creators to go out there and really start adding value instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and, and that was one of the inspirations behind co-creating these templates with you guys. Uh, we've, we have a community of over 1 million product managers and by no means they're all engineers or, or MBAs or designers. Everyone comes from a very different background, but what's common to them is that they would ask, okay, well, I need to create a roadmap or I need to create a product requirements document and some of those deliverables that they, they need on a daily or weekly basis. And uh, anyone can create one of those, right? Like what are the good practices? Product management is not really that new or at least uh, that's, that hasn't been that well known in, in every part of the world. And, and I think it was a good opportunity to really help people have a head start. I, I noticed that, and I'm a user of, of Mura and, and Coda. And uh, when the moment we reached out, it was an automatic yes. And, and you guys knew each other. So it was like an opportunity to, to do just one more thing. And um, and I was also curious to know before this project, what was been your your influence? Like how many product managers use your product, and what are some of those um, 
main use cases? Yeah, so I, I guess, so, you know, Coda is, I guess, for background for people that don't know the product, it's, you know, sort of part doc, part sheet, part database, part application. That sounds like a lot. The idea is to basically blend those things uh, so that teams can, you know, accomplish whatever they, they need to accomplish, right? And, and so they shouldn't have to be changing tools uh, left and right. They should be able to do a lot of that in, in one spot. Um, really inspiring use cases from all across the industry. Uh, you know, companies like Spotify, Figma, Robinhood, Square, uh, all running large parts of their products uh, on, on, on Coda. Um, and in particular, you know, a few quick stories. Uh, there's a template that a lot of people have seen um, called uh, basically how, how Figma runs product on, uh, on, on Coda. And it's my friend Yuki. Yuki basically runs a product team at Figma. It's an awesome example of like how you design a process very intentionally uh, to accommodate like the outcome you want in your product team. Um, and so there are lots of fun examples. If you go to code.io slash gallery, you can kind of see all of those examples. Um, you know, the, the kind of core of what you'll see in that gallery is people's great ideas paired with how to actually do it, right? So a lot of times what you see is a blog post, which is, okay, this is a great idea, but like, how do I actually translate that? Like, what am, what am I supposed to do with this like 3000 words? And so one of the great things about the gallery and, you know, something that we hear a lot from our customers is just like, this is crazy. Like I can see, you know, exactly how Yuki runs product at Figma, but I can also see, you know, exactly how to do it. And I can like copy that template and just, and just go, you know, from there. And so that's why I think these, these product school templates, um, you know, that pair things like Mural and Coda together uh, are really powerful because, you know, it's, it's a how-to. You can just jump off and get started. I, you know, I think that this idea of templates and, and you're starting to see more and more companies invest in the idea of templates um, saying, hey, I've got this product that has all of this power. My, my engineering team is invested in, in creating all of these amazing features, but customers don't often get the opportunity to use them because they start off with a very basic bare bones experience. And it's not designed around what they're trying to accomplish. And um, Carlos, you asked a good question, like what are we seeing project managers do? It's anywhere from running design sprints, uh, retrospectives, product launches, roadmaps, uh, and probably the most important thing uh, is feature prioritization. So there's a feature in our product that allows cross-functional teams. So we actually just had a, an experience this week where we had marketing, uh, sales, our team and the product team put all of the things that that everybody needed onto a, a canvas uh, and use the feature prioritization voting feature um, to sort of do the selecting. And it was a really interesting experience because it allowed everybody to sort of you know contribute to the, the process and use a fun feature um, to help you know prioritize uh, the roadmap. Well, that's my favorite part of this session now is that we get to see, we're going to experience how it actually works. So without any further ado, uh, Paul, why don't you share the screen and, and show us one of your templates and how product managers can, can get the most out of them. So what was really fun about this is, you know, they asked me to demo the customer journey template and they were like, hey, have you used the template before? And guess what? We're already using it with our team. So it was an easy thing for, for me to do. And I'm thankful that we did this partnership because we didn't have it in our, our template library. There's a couple of things I want to show the folks that are that are watching this today um, about why this and how this template is, is super helpful. One is that it's very structured. Uh, we have a feature around outlines that kind of takes you through the structure of, in this example, a customer journey. Um, it does some introduction. It creates an agenda for you. I think one of the hardest things that a lot of us have experienced is, well, how do we create an agenda? Like, what are the steps that we follow? You don't have to worry about that. Let's focus on your customer journey. Here's a, a recommended agenda. We talk about very specific uh, tips that are, are specific to this use case in, in this template. And then um, we have amazing resources from Coda, Mural, and Product School. So if you want to learn best practices of how to do a customer journey, you're one click away, you can read some articles, sort of refresh. And these resources are tied to this specific template and use case. And so it's, it kind of boots you up uh, into uh, the experience. 
when we talk about structure, you know, one of the things that's important is defining the situation or the goal. And, and in my experience, you know, a lot of times that's overlooked. Um, and so it's, you know, the number one thing. And so we encourage, and, and the template says, hey, before you go to step two, let's make sure we do step one. We also have persona uh, prototyping. Well, it's not only that the demographics and we outline the things that go into the persona, but you'll see right here, it says 15 minutes. We've all been in a meeting that's either accomplished 5% of what's supposed to be accomplished in that meeting, and then we have to have more. And so there's a, we have a feature, and I have used this extensively <laughs> since I've been uh, using Mural around setting a timer. And in that case, we say, hey, look, let's take 15 minutes so we can all you know, work together to um, put our thoughts and organize our thoughts. And then in 15 minutes, the time's up and we uh, consolidate uh, those things. The other thing is we look at the, the journey map uh, specifically. And so we've outlined the thoughts, the feelings, uh, pain points and opportunities. And this is one of those things that we allow 30 minutes for in this, in this particular template. The fun thing that I've experienced, this has nothing to do with the template, is the idea of how do you bring fun to collaboration? And so our team, we have a, a Spotify playlist that we use. And so every time we do these collaborations, we play music uh, and we, a, we have a maestro on our team who's in charge of the mood and the music and all that sort of stuff. And it, it may sound like a small thing, but in my 20 years of working in technology, I have never played music in a meeting room while working on a PowerPoint or even putting stickies on a board. And I can tell you that as we start to work asynchronously, as we start to work remotely, little things like that, bringing fun to the experience and having somebody who's the maestro is, is, a, is a fun pro tip that I would, I would give people. Um, because the teams walk away feeling really different about the experience had they not had some fun music while they were collaborating. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think music gets better outcomes. Um, the other thing that I would share with folks is that how you work with Mural is different than maybe how you may have collaborated in a meeting room or with a PowerPoint or a Google Sheet or something. While people were talking, and this was my first experience that really opened my eyes to the power of Mural. While people are talking, while the presentation is going on, people are still contributing. And so my first experience, we were doing a global uh, workshop with about 50 people from around the world. And there was somebody talking in the entire time, every time a, a neuron snapped in somebody's mind and they had a thought and they wanted to get it on, the, the mural was alive the entire time. I had not had that experience when somebody was presenting a PowerPoint to me or you know, even doing sticky notes. You had to wait for the person. And, and so this idea that when you get an idea, it, it comes to life. And it's also important as you bring diverse teams, sales and marketing, I talked about prioritization, sales and marketing and all of these teams contributing to make, you know, in this case, a customer uh, journey better. The, the most expensive thing that most companies have is human capital. And I, I truly believe that Mural and, you know, these sort of uh, templatized experiences allow companies to get all of the thoughts on the table no matter what level in the organization you are, no matter what uh, discipline, you know, everyone in this example cares about their customers and the journey that they're having. And so, um, you know, that's a couple of the features we have and, and the template itself. And so I hope this is, is helpful to those uh, program managers out there looking to do a customer journey. And there are seven other templates that I'm sure we'll, we'll mention later on in the broadcast. Thanks for sharing, Paul. One of the things I love about this particular example is that the user can choose if they want to do it by themselves or they want to have an immersive experience with others and kind of co-create while they go. Uh, I completely hear you on a PowerPoint situation. I was very frustrated of not being able to really share and involve others in the process. And uh, now I just can't imagine my life without really having this type of access to, yes, just being part of the creative process, not just waiting for someone to finish and then clicking a share button and then giving feedback. It's a, such, a, such a clunky transactional process that I don't think works anymore. Um, cool. Um, just for context, so this is one of the nine templates that we uh, prepared together in partnership with 
um, Mural and Coda, we had obviously customer journey. It's a, it's a huge request, uh, roadmaps, another one. And in this particular case, our number one is actually PRD, product requirements document. And for that one, I would love to see this in action with Lane. I'm excited for this too, because one of the things that we really need help with is PRD. So I'm learning. <laughs> Yeah, Paul, I love what you said about just like having all the voices in uh, in that space and, and being able to collaborate in real time. And I love how like that that mural sort of board is just so visual. Like you could sort of traverse that thing in a meeting with with ease. That's awesome. Um, yeah, let's let's dive into PRDs. Um, yeah, I mean P PRDs. I think are let's see, we view them in context of. Uh, other processes, right? And and when we when I hear the term process, um, we we think a lot about the term rituals, um, which we, we mean something kind of like very specific when we say rituals. Um, basically, every team already has a set of processes. They they run a set of PRDs. They run a set of customer journey um, type things. And so one of the things that we think about, and one of the reasons I'm excited to, to do the kind of templates that we've done together. Uh, is you know it, it's a it's a chance for people to take some of these best practices that are um, you know really specific to an organization oftentimes and and sort of like customize those name them make sure that every employee who's like onboarding know them uh, and, and sort of template them so um, let me show you what we've been up to with this this PRD uh, let's see. Cool. So this is, uh, this is the PRD we worked on together. I guess my my main advice uh, to, to folks that are thinking about like how to design processes, how to design PRDs is is basically you know design design these things with the same intention that you design your your actual product, um, and and I think the outcome you know is is much better that way. Um, so let me walk through what we've been up to. So. You know, people are you know, need an explanation of, of what a PRD is. Uh, here it is. You can copy this template. I'll actually flip over to a copied version of this. Uh, there are four main sections of this PRD. Uh, the first is problem. Uh, next is solution. Next is you know how you're going to actually launch, and then lastly, kind of like how you're going to manage stakeholders. Um, so let me go through some of the kind of unique elements and and maybe voice over a little bit about the importance of some of these. Um, obviously, clarifying the problem is like super duper important. I find that like if teams are having problems downstream, it's very often because we didn't clarify which problem we care most about solving. And like in when you pick up, you know, a customer journey, like you can pick up so many different problems um, in that in that process. And so super important to, to get really precise on which of those problems you think is most important to actually solve. Um, so, you know, really important section here. One of the things I really like to do is make sure that we specify non-goals as a part of that. Um, you know, your pet project over here that you've been wanting to build for three years is actually not part of this, this, this particular effort. And I just want to make that really clear up front. So um, I think that that can sometimes mitigate downstream pain. Um, the other thing is is really specifying the risk as early as possible. I think you know this is less for being able to to you know categorize every risk and make sure that you have everyone. It's more about just having the conversation. Like you know what are the risks? Okay, how do we start to like mitigate those early in the process? Um, I think you know the sooner you have that conversation as you're writing a requirement stuff, the better. Um, second, second section is solution. So what are you actually building? Um, obviously mural has some awesome templates in this arena. Like uh, you can whiteboard, you can sketch, you can wireframe, um, you know, big fan of em embedding that kind of stuff in our docs. Um, you know, as you get a little bit closer and maybe you're doing sort of full fidelity mocks, uh, you might see some of those flows embedded, uh, from a tool like Figma. Um, one thing that I'm I'm pretty passionate about is keeping a decision log, and all of our teams do this, and we see this increasingly in our customers. The basic idea here is that, especially in like long running customer efforts or lo long running efforts in general, what you find is you know there's a sense of like, how did we get here exactly? Um, you know, you're three months into this thing, like, okay, there seemed like there was a key decision, like 
three months ago? Like, what was that again? And like, why did we decide that? And what was our rationale? And so I'm a huge fan of asking teams to really document their decisions as they come. And, and you know, there's sort of two, two external, positive externalities from that. One is that, you know, it forces the team to get clear on the decisions that they're making right now um, and, you know, clear enough to really enumerate the answer. And then secondly, you know, you have a new engineer starting on the team, you have a new designer starting on the team, and you want to say, like, let me show you exactly the key decision points, right? And, and so you can actually do that. And one, one thing that we do inside of Coda is, like, this will have a Slack button uh, as, a, as a column. And so when you, when you write up something, we'll often send it into Slack so that there's a way that we sort of um, communicate that decision out. So that's, that's sort of the solution bucket. Um, one thing I'm, I'm also quite passionate about is clarifying milestones, like as soon as possible. Um, I think very often when I feel angst on a team, uh, it's because a PM hasn't specified the milestones, right? And like, hasn't gotten clear on like, which customers, okay, how many customers are we launching that beta to? Is it like 10 or is it like a thousand, right? Um, and so clarifying this as soon as possible, I think really de-stresses the entire team, right? And, and I'm a huge fan of that. Um, the other thing I think it does, or at least for what we found is really important to not just set the near-term milestone, but set the one after that, right? Because very often teams will careen into that first milestone, um, just barely hit a date, just barely hit a launch, and then they're stuck flat-footed, right? And it's like everybody shows up the next Wednesday or the next Monday, and they're like, "Okay, so what, what do we do now?" You know, um, let's let's ev obviously evaluate the launch that we had, but but let's also figure out you know what we're going to do next. And if you've set those milestones a couple in advance, um, it makes a big difference. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people like to visualize things on a timeline. Uh, you can do that in Coda, you know, extend uh, and see the details of each of those, those milestones. Um, you know, run, run press releases. Big fan of writing the press release in advance. Paul, it sounds like you spent some time with Amazon. That's, a, that's obviously a big piece there. Um, operational checklists, you know, let's, let's just run a checklist right in the same place that we're writing this PRD so that we don't have to bump out to a Google Sheet or something like that. Um, and then a couple on the stakeholder side that I think are, are kind of fun. So one of the things that we will really commonly do is use uh, what are called reactions. So actually just to paint a, a slightly different picture, say you write a big Google Doc and you send it out to a thousand people or you send it out to a hundred people. And what, what, what's like your feeling in that moment? You're, you, often your feeling is like, okay, like I'm going to wait for the ensuing comment like war in this like 60 pixel, you know, right rail of, of the document. And that's like, that's a really bad feeling, right? And I remember feeling this inside of YouTube and Google all the time, um, like send it out, who's read it, who hasn't. Um, and so a really common pattern that you'll see in Codadocs is you type slash reaction, uh, you get this little reaction and uh, you'll see people do this and then they'll just say like, have you read this? Uh, and then people will come in at the bottom of the doc and they'll just click this thumbs up, right? And then I can kind of see like who's actually read this thing. Um, so then, you know, when we start the meeting, it's not like, you know, who's read my proposal, see like raised hands on Zoom and try to like count the tiles. It's like, no, I'm just going to go look. 14 people out of 20 people in this meeting have read this. Okay, let's get going. Um, so this, this same building block can get used in a different way, which is, you know, I really care about this feature. I want to kind of subscribe for updates. So I'm going to mark my name here, add myself here. Um, that's, a, that's a really common one. And I think a really simple starting point too for people doing PRDs. Obviously, if you're in a bigger organization, you, you might need to have reviewer sign-offs. Um, and then probably the most important one and the one that you'll see most commonly in both our customers and, and our docs is a sentiment tracker. Um, so the basic idea here is, you know, I don't want you to write six paragraphs in a comment at the top of the doc on one of the headers is like your main feedback. I actually want to gather that in one place from everyone, right? And like be inclusive about it. And so one of the things that we do, we call sentiment trackers. Basically, you know, how are you feeling about this proposal? I'm gonna mark one to four, and then I'm gonna write like a couple paragraphs on how I actually feel about this. Um, and so this is, uh, and then obviously, you know, 
this this little checkbox it hides everybody else's responses so you're not influenced by their you know their writing and then you can kind of uncheck this and oftentimes we'll start a meeting with reading a proposal and then you know checking this this box uh to see like how everybody feels about it um so some simple kind of like tools on top of a a really common process um and again like the spirit of this is to design you know the way that you're going to run your prd process with intention uh with the same care that you run you know your your design processes on your your actual product so thank you for sharing you know as I as you were demoing the template i was thinking two things one is uh, it's so cool that we can see these things in action okay uh, there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of articles out there about how to do certain things, but they don't really show you the actual how. And uh, number two is, I wish I had had something like this when I was getting started, because that feeling of opening a blank page and saying, okay, <laughs> let's create our PRD or let's create a customer journey or a, it's just a, a blocker sometimes. And the reality is this has been done so many times by so many really amazing product leaders and companies that there's no need to reinvent the wheel in that in that part. Like there's definitely a lot of things that we can all innovate once we know those building blocks. And some people called it the other day Lego, legalizing the, the actual process of building products, which I agree, because now you can really get to the parts where you can add value as, as fast as possible. Um, so maybe Lane, just to continue on your example with PRD, um, can you share any like cool examples of the companies or product leaders who use that a similar template to kind of launch something cool? Yeah, I mean, uh, lots, lots, of, lots of good examples uh, in the gallery. I actually just pull that up real quick. Uh, yeah, so the, the gallery is actually full of some of these. And I think that uh, it's a great starting point. So, you know, another, another example, if people have heard of, there's a kind of famous tool inside of Google called LaunchCal. Uh, and Shiva, who is a, a product leader at WeWork, Facebook, um, longtime uh, Google and YouTube executive, um, you know, basically took this whole template and basically took this whole tool and created a code doc that does the exact same thing. Um, and you know, this is now this is now used at a whole whole bunch of different companies, and it's, it was just released, um, you know, not too long ago. Um, I mentioned the. Uh, the uh, Yuki's template, and this is basically his his approach to PRDs. Um, I think this is a fantastic starting point. Um, this one of the things that this does is it looks across an entire product team, um, so all the PRDs are in one place, uh, which is really nice. Uh, that way, you don't have you know. Um, so you can kind of see. Here's, here's the way he likes to structure the PRDs inside of Figma, um, you know, contributors, what's the TLDR. You can see very similar items to the, the product school template, you know, solution alignment, things like that, uh, launch readiness. Um, you know, they have specific teams, so you can kind of see the team specific stuff re represented in here. Um, and then importantly, you know, you can kind of categorize this in ways that are, in, you know, applicable to your team. So this is something that I see a lot in documents uh, today, which is like, let's de let's take apart the process of launching something, all the different phases and really enumerate each of those really crisply so that we know as a team where we are. Um, and this is, I think, just a, you know, good best practice across uh, launches. So anyway, that that's a, that's a very quick example. Um, but this again, the gallery. I'd, I'd encourage folks to take a take a spin through it. It's got some really uh, fun examples, um, and again, used by you know people like Spotify to run their OKR process. You know, companies like Pinterest, uh, Robinhood, etc. So there you go. Cool. Thank you. And uh, Paul, I wanted to get back to you uh, because. You also mentioned uh, some companies that use Mura. I know there are large organizations all the way down to small startups. Um, so how can someone really get off the ground? I remember the first time I used um, Mura. It's actually a blank canvas with so many different features. And, and I also saw that some of those features are actually integrations with other 
documents, like could be Coda, could be other types of documents. So can you give me an, an example of how can someone get a, a head start? Well, I think that the example that I showed in the partnership that we have with, you know, both Coda and Product School is, in, you know, is us going on this journey of deeply trying to understand the things that specific roles, in this case, product managers are trying to accomplish. And I think Lane said something that was, you know, and, and you as well, Carlos, this has all been done before. Like the, the ability to get access to how Google operates you know, who creates some of the, the biggest code is, is a jump start in how a startup or even a big company, you know, the, every company is now a technology company. So you have a lot of Fortune 500 companies that are not rich in, you know, creating technology or AI. You pick your, your place on where they're jumping into the technology journey. And the, the, now that you can get access to the way some of the biggest companies do it in a very short way, you know, time to value of learning how to do this with Coda or with Mural now is pretty easy. If I'm a PM, I, you know, read an article or watch, you know, some of the, like, like I showed you some of the uh, resources that we've put in and you're up and running. And so I think, you know, these sort of experiences are really important as, as companies start to, you know, legacy, as companies start to become uh, technology companies. I love what you said about now every company is a technology company. I agree completely. Um, I guess, you know, especially now that a lot of us are working remotely, uh, there's definitely a, a need to find a way to better collaborate. And uh, and that way is not just physical. So um, I just want to quickly share my screen to show folks uh, how to access um, uh, the two templates that you demoed and seven others. So anyone can go to productschool.com slash templates. Uh, by the way, all of them are absolutely free and available right away. And you can see, um, we were talking about PRD before. With one click, you can see code as template. You can create a, a mural on that one. We also have the roadmap, which is <laughs> very, very much requested by product people. Product launch, which is huge. Um, retrospectives, I think uh, sometimes we don't talk enough about that, which is like literally analyzing what happened after a launch and, and how can we get it done better for the next time. And um, design sprint, customer journey maps, user flow, user personas, um, feature prioritization, as you mentioned before, Paul. And, you know, like bottom line is that you don't need a PhD in nuclear physics <laughs> to do any of this. Like literally with two clicks, you can start getting getting value. And, and I want to thank you guys for, for co-creating these uh, templates with us and make them available for the entire community for free. Um, is there anything else um, you would like to add, maybe Paul and then Lane? Well, first of all, thank you very much for, for partnering with us and, and, you know, helping our focus on, you know, program managers and people that are getting into um, better practices to identify objectives and problems and solve those hard problems. Uh, and second is we're just getting started. So I'm looking forward to doing uh, a lot more as we learn uh, what's working and what's not working. Yeah, same similar feeling. Um, just excited to partner with both Mural and Product School. I think we're all, you know, trying to trying to help people be better at their jobs at the end of the day. Um, you know, better better launches. Uh, Paul, I loved what you said about having more fun in the process of doing it. I think that that's often overlooked. Um, so yeah, just uh, happy happy to be a part of this and. You know, templates are, are the beginning of it. Excited to see what people make. Um, we're always kind of reflecting on what we hear back uh, from instances like this. So we'd love to hear hear people's feedback uh, as they go. Definitely, I agree on the, uh, the having fun sentiment. And I think the, the feature that you guys have, uh, the emojis, and uh, that's really, really cool. Um, <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, let's keep building cool products together. And thank you all for attending the session. Bye-bye.